Once again from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where at this hour we're back on the air a bit earlier than had been scheduled uh, to cover the installation of the Orbital Sciences Cygnus cargo craft onto the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. It has been a busy morning here in the uh, flight control room uh, where a shift handover is underway. The Orbit 1 team of flight controllers about to hand over to the Orbit 2 team. The Orbit 1 team under the direction of the lead Cygnus uh, flight director, Emily Nelson, has been on console throughout the course of the overnight hours, supervising the rendezvous and the grapple of the Cygnus uh, craft that occurred at 5.36 a.m. Central Time as the International Space Station and Cygnus flew 260 miles over northern Libya. We'll talk more about the rendezvous in just a moment. At this hour, uh, with the Orbit 2 team, uh, flight controllers about to come on console, uh, the Cygnus has been maneuvered into what is known as the RTL position, the ready-to-latch position, by the robotics officer here in Mission Control, Melanie Miller, who took over uh, commanding of the Canadarm2 robotic arm after the grapple of Cygnus by Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson with the help of Europeans Space Agency astronaut Alexander Gerst as the two operated from the cupola on the International Space Station. Everything uh, went uh supremely well with the rendezvous of Cygnus uh, to the International Space Station. Uh, the two and a half days of engine firings and rendezvous maneuvers uh, by Cygnus to fine-tune its path to the station following its launch on Sunday afternoon from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia went like a charm. No issues uh, whatsoever with the spacecraft or with the rendezvous profile that resulted in Cygnus being grappled uh, by Swanson at 5.36 a.m. Central Time. The uh, Cygnus came into uh, the vicinity of the International Space Station earlier this morning. This, uh, this. Grapple confirmed. Cygnus is captured at 5.36 a.m. Central Time as the International Space Station flew 260 miles over northern Libya. Houston Station M2, we now have a seventh crew member. Janice Moss is now part of Expedition 40. Janice devoted her life to space and accomplished many wonderful things at NASA and Orbital Sciences, including five shuttle missions. And today, Janice's legacy in space continues. Welcome aboard the ISS, Janice. 20, that was great. Great capture. We see a good capture, uh, good latching. Janice was a friend, a colleague, and, uh, and a crewmate to many of us, and her history epitomizes what it's like to be part of the team that explores the universe. She worked for Orbital, she flew in space, and then she shepherded an, an observatory. I mean, whether you're NASA or one of the commercial partners, it's actually all the same. We're all about exploration. So thanks a lot, and it's great to see Cygnus on board and Janice as well. And uh, that was a replay of uh, the highlight of the uh, grapple of the Cygnus cargo craft, uh, Orbital Sciences uh, commercial cargo craft that was launched on Sunday from Wallops, Virginia, arriving at the International Space Station at 5.36 a.m. Central Time, where it was grappled by Station Commander Steve Swanson uh, as uh, the station and Cygnus passed over northern Libya. The uh, Janus Voss, uh, uh, for which uh, the uh, cargo craft is named, named after the late astronaut who flew on five space shuttle missions. Uh, she passed away in February of 2012, having worked uh, before becoming an astronaut at the Orbital Sciences Corporation, supporting mission integration and flight operations. So with uh, Cygnus in tow in the first 
firm grasp of the Canadarm2. You can see in this uh, video as uh, the two craft fly 260 miles over the Western Democratic Republic of the Congo, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, that uh, we are in the final stages of the installation process. This is uh, the process that involves the robotics officer here in Mission Control maneuvering uh, Cygnus and its common berthing mechanism, which is called the passive common, common berthing mechanism, into precise alignment with the active common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Once uh, these two uh, berthing mechanisms are precisely aligned in what is known as uh, ready-to-latch uh, orientation, uh, then Reed Wiseman, uh, the NASA flight engineer, as part of the Expedition 40 crew, will take over to send commands from a laptop computer on board to begin the process of bolting Cygnus in place on the nadir or Earth-facing port of the Harmony module. There are 16 bolts that must be driven on computer command, four gangs of four bolts apiece. Once we uh, achieve second stage capture, that is the demarcation point at which uh, Cygnus will be considered hard-mated to Harmony for the next four weeks uh, for the unloading of some 3,300 pounds of cargo that includes supplies, uh, spare parts, and scientific experiments for the Expedition 40 crew. Here in Mission Control, uh, the robotics officer, Melanie Miller, is uh, in the process of meticulously moving uh, the Cygnus spacecraft into this RTL position, the ready-to-latch position. As we mentioned earlier, uh, moving a bit ahead of schedule, a bit ahead of the timeline. Uh, the schedule calls uh, for the bolting of Cygnus in place, second stage capture, again, the demarcation point uh, that will signify uh, Cygnus being hard mated uh, to the Harmony module for the next four weeks of cargo operations. The uh, plan calls for uh, Station Commander Steve Swanson to begin outfitting the small passageway between the hatchway to Cygnus and the Harmony module later today with jumper cables and other equipment that would be associated with the hatch opening that is currently scheduled for just after 5 a.m. Central Time on Thursday. However, the flight control team and the crew will discuss the progress of the crew's timeline over the next several hours and determine whether or not the crew will press into hatch opening later today, continuing to run ahead of schedule as uh, has been their practice throughout the course of their time on orbit. The arrival of Cygnus uh, today at the International Space Station uh, signifies uh, the start of um, a flurry of activity of visiting vehicles at the complex. Uh, next Monday, uh, the uh, Russian ISS Progress 55 craft that is currently mated to the Piers docking compartment and which arrived at the station back in April will undock from the complex.
Opening up the pier's docking port for the arrival of a brand new Russian unmanned resupply ship, the ISS Progress 56, that is scheduled to launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan next Wednesday, U.S. time, early Thursday morning Baikonur time, uh, for a four orbit, six hour rendezvous uh, to dock to the International Space Station to deliver some two and a half tons of supplies, food, and fuel for the crew on board. Just 24 hours later, on the night of July 24th, the final automated transfer vehicle for the European Space Agency is scheduled to launch from the Ariane Spas launch site in Kourou, French Guiana, on the northern coast of South America. The Georges Lamatra, as it is named, for the Belgian astronomer and physicist, uh, will be lifting off on an Ariane 5 rocket from Kourou, bound on a 19-day rendezvous to arrive at the International Space Station on August the 12th. It will be bearing some seven tons of food, fuel, supplies, and experiments on board uh, that final European cargo ship. Cygnus uh, continuing in the grasp of the Canadarm2, being carefully uh, installed to the ready-to-latch position that will uh, set the stage for Reed Wiseman to begin the bolting of Cygnus in place. Once uh, it is firmly mated to the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module, uh, then uh, the robotics officer here in Mission Control will ungrapple the robotic arm from Cygnus and put it into a parked position uh, well away from uh, the cargo craft itself. This uh, view uh, shows uh, the centerline berthing camera system, uh, the view that is available to the uh, crew on board, as well as the robotics officer here in Mission Control. Uh, basically a view uh, looking at uh, the common berthing mechanism of Cygnus at as, as it is moving in uh, for its precise alignment to the common berthing mechanism on the nadir side of the Harmony module to which it will be firmly attached a short time from now. The International Space Station and the Cygnus uh, cargo craft flying 260 miles over the southern Indian Ocean at the moment. A good view of uh, Cygnus uh, being carefully maneuvered into an alignment position to the Earth-facing port on Harmony. Prominent in the field of view on the left side of your view here is the Columbus module, the European Space Agency's uh, science lab and associated uh, scientific hardware mounted on the uh, front of the Columbus module.
All quiet here in the flight control room as our shift handover continues. This portion of the operation always uh, very slow and meticulous, uh, delicately executed by the robotics officer here in mission control uh, to ensure that uh, Cygnus is properly aligned for the initiation of the bolting of Cygnus in place to this earth-facing port on the Harmony module. We've uh, passed out of range uh, as we hand over satellites on our tracking and data relay satellite system. We should be reacquiring our uh, television coverage uh, just a few minutes from now. Everything has proceeded uh, on track and uh, slightly ahead of schedule uh, during the course of the overnight hours and the rendezvous and capture of Cygnus that occurred uh, once again at 5.36 a.m. Central Time by Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson operating from the cupola of the International Space Station with the assistance of European Space Agency astronaut Alexander Gerst. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the robotics officer in Mission Control reports uh, that uh, she is about uh, three or four centimeters away from reaching the ready to latch position. Everything continuing to uh, proceed on track uh, once uh, that RTL uh, orientation is achieved and alignment is verified between Cygnus and the common berthing mechanism on the uh, Earth-facing port of the Harmony module, uh, Reed Wiseman uh, will initiate the commanding to begin the bolting of Cygnus into place. Use the station on two for a bolt. Houston's here. 
Hey, so I want to give you a heads up that I'm complete with uh, lunch, and uh, just give me a call when you're ready for the procedure. And Reed, we've got just a couple more inches to RTLs, and we'll give you a call when we are ready. That's perfect. Thank you. Station Houston, RTLs in work. Got 
Chapi. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, spacecraft communicator Katie Coleman, who's about to hand over to uh, Leslie Ringo here in the flight control room as the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers is completing a handover from the Orbit 1 team. Uh, you heard her uh, call up uh, and indicate to Reed Wiseman uh, that we are now in the ready to latch orientation uh, with a precise alignment of the common berthing mechanism uh, on the aft end of the Cygnus spacecraft, uh, precisely aligned with the common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. This uh, now sets the stage for flight engineer Reed Wiseman to begin the process of sending commands to uh, engage uh, the bolts, 16 bolts in the common uh, berthing mechanism uh, architecture, uh, four gangs of four bolts apiece that will be driven uh, into a, a closed position uh, to indicate first stage capture, then second stage capture, and uh, the second stage capture being the point uh, in the procedures uh, that uh, signifies a hard mate for the Cygnus to the International Space Station. So we'll be standing by for those calls as we enter the final phase of Cygnus's arrival at the complex. To uh, recap uh, the activities to this point, uh, Cygnus uh, completed uh, a flawless rendezvous uh, to the International Space Station, arriving at a point uh, almost a thousand feet directly below the station uh, in the wee hours this morning, then uh, firing its engines in a series of final rendezvous maneuvers to inch its way up from that point a thousand feet directly below the station into a point just 30 feet away from the complex uh, where it was grappled by the Canadarm2 robotic arm uh, operated by Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson from the Cupola with the assistance of European Space Agency astronaut Alexander Gerst. Flight engineer Reed Wiseman now uh, moves into the mix as uh, he is about to begin the procedures to begin bolting Cygnus in place with second stage capture uh, reflective, once it occurs, of the hard mate of Cygnus to the International Space Station for the next four weeks. The uh, robotics officer reports uh, all good ready to latch indications now. And uh, the scene now shifts to the operations and support officer, the mechanical systems officer here in Mission Control. Uh, Cygnus has been guided into place for the installation and bolting. Uh, 16 bolts now will be commanded to the driven position uh, by flight engineer Reed Wiseman uh, in the final act of a two and a half day uh, venture off the launch pad at Wallops, Virginia to the International Space Station for the Orbital Sciences Cygnus cargo craft.
Houston, I am in step three, checking for stable attitude, control config. And read your go. Copy that. That report indicates that uh, Cygnus is in a very stable, rock-steady configuration in the uh, common berthing mechanism envelope of the Harmony module. Wiseman now will begin uh, the commanding through a laptop computer to initiate the bolting of Cygnus in place. Catch first stage and work. Copy. Reed Wiseman uh, aboard the International Space Station uh, reporting uh, that uh, commands are being sent on the first set of bolts. Uh, the first stage capture is the uh, interim stage of the bolting of Cygnus into place. Second stage capture, once announced, will indicate that we have a hard mate between Cygnus and the Harmony module. Houston, step four is complete. Your go for SRMS mode to limit. And we copy, and it's in work. Putting uh, the uh, Canadarm2 into the so-called limp mode will prevent any inadvertent movement by the arm that would perturbate the precise alignment between Cygnus and the common berthing mechanism on the Harmony module. In Station Houston on two, SSRMS limped, go for second stage capture. You are go for step five, decimal one. Hey, sounds good. Capture second stage at low torque is going into work now. With that call, uh, first stage capture complete. That's the interim step of the bolting of Cygnus in place. Standing by now for the second stage capture that will denote uh, the hard mate of Cygnus to the International Space Station.
Now Houston, I am going to step six. All four latches look good. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, mechanical systems officer here in Mission Control reports a good second stage capture. And so it's 7.53 a.m. Central Time, a little over uh, two hours after it was grappled uh, in open space by uh, Steve Swanson, the Expedition 40 commander. Cygnus is now hard mated to the International Space Station's Harmony module, a fixture for the station for the next four weeks. Again, 7.53 a.m. Central Time. Mark. Uh, that as the hard mate time, second stage capture complete. Cygnus is now bolted to the International Space Station. That occurring as uh, the International Space Station flew 260 miles above the Earth off the east coast of the continent of Australia. So to uh, recap, the activities all morning long went uh, by the book as Orbital Sciences Cygnus spacecraft arrived at the International Space Station on its second commercial resupply mission. It was uh, grappled uh, over northern Libya at 5.36 a.m. Central Time by Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson operating from the cupola of the International Space Station. The robotics officer here in Mission Control then maneuvered Cygnus into its installation position, uh, precisely aligning Cygnus uh, with the common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module. And just moments ago at 7.53 a.m. Central Time, a second stage capture was announced by flight engineer Reed Wiseman as he uh, sent commands to bolt Cygnus in place onto that uh, Earth-facing port of the Harmony module. Cygnus will remain attached to the International Space Station until August 15th, allowing the crew on board to uh, empty its contents, 3,300 pounds of cargo, including uh, supplies, food, scientific experiments that uh, will be utilized on board the orbital laboratory. So with that, we'll wrap up our coverage with two programming notes. Uh, Space Station Live uh, will air on NASA television at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time today with a recap of all of the activities associated with the Cygnus Rendezvous grapple and installation to the International Space Station. Later today at uh, 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. The next trio of crew members who will launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to the International Space Station, NASA flight engineer Barry Wilmore, Russian flight engineer and Soyuz commander Alexander Samokutyaev, and Russian flight engineer Elena Sorova, only the fourth Russian female cosmonaut to fly in space. Uh, they will hold their uh, crew news conference at the Johnson Space Center, answering questions about their mission and uh, a look ahead at uh, their six months aboard the International Outpost that will begin with a launch from Baikonur on September 25th, U.S. time. So all that coming up later today on NASA television. For now, Cygnus firmly bolted to the International Space Station following a flawless rendezvous. That's it for now. Tune in later on NASA television. This is Mission Control Houston.